फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ थर्मोडाइनमिक्स In 1850 German physicist Rudolf Clausius and British mathematician William Thomson Kelvin stated both the first and second law of thermodynamics. Scottish mechanical engineer William Rankine was also a founding contributor to the science of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics is also known as law of conservation of energy. Energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, but transformation of one form into another can be possible. Here are some examples of first law of thermodynamics in our daily life. Green plants absorb the sun's heat energy and transform solar energy into chemical energy through photosynthesis. so heat energy converted into chemical energy animals can get chemical energy by eating these plants and leaves when plants and animals die most of their bodies are decomposed and turned into fossil fuels these fossil fuels may be burned to provide heat for use directly to power engines such as internal combustion engines in motor vehicles or to generate electricity or to launch rocket but in terms of heat internal energy and work the first law of thermodynamics can be stated as the change in internal energy of a system is equal to the difference of the heat transfer into a system and the work done by the system above statement can be mathematically written as du is equal to q minus w The internal energy is nothing but a sum of kinetic energy, potential energy and other energies present in the molecules of the body. If work is defined as the work done on the system instead of work done by the system, then the first law of thermodynamics would be du is equal to q plus w. As we know heat absorbed by the system from the surroundings is plus q heat absorbed by the surroundings from the system is minus q work done by the system on the surroundings is minus w work done on the system by the surroundings is plus w let's look at an explanation if a boy takes the energy drink then he gains q amount of energy from it That means q amount of energy is entering in his body. So, he has gained q amount of energy to do work. And right now, he is having total internal energy u1. Now, this muscular body spends some w amount of energy by the work. Suppose running After running his internal energy becomes u2 inlet energy in his body to the initial internal energy minus work done is equal to final internal energy above statement can be mathematically written as u2 minus u1 is equal to du is equal to q minus w again consider a closed system whose internal energy is ui if the system is supplied q amount of heat the internal energy of the system will become ui plus q now if work is also done on the system the final internal energy becomes uf thus uf is equal to ui plus q plus w or du is equal to q plus w there are some limitations in the first law of thermodynamics number 1 the first law does not give any information on whether the process is possible or not for example fuel burns in an engine 
when fuel burns in an engine, some of the chemical energy in the fuel is converted into heat. The heat is converted into mechanical energy. But we cannot convert this mechanical energy back into fuel. In other words, engine cannot produce fuel back. Thus, this is one of the limitations of the first law of thermodynamics. Number 2. This law does not explain whether the process will occur on its own or not, such as melting of ice at room temperature. When we put a block of ice on a table at room temperature, it will melt down spontaneously after some time on its own. But water becoming ice is not spontaneous subject to the same condition. That means the first law of thermodynamics does not say whether this thermodynamic process occurs on its own or not. In other words, first law of thermodynamics does not tell us whether the process is spontaneous or not. Third point. The first law does not provide any sufficient condition for a certain process to take place. We already know heat always flows from higher to lower temperature, but it is impossible for heat to move by itself from a low temperature to a high temperature. So in the first law of thermodynamics, it does not say anything about the direction of the flow of heat. That's all for this session. If you like this video, please like, share and comment if you have any suggestions. Thank you for being with us.